Very solid, well-written modern Western from the late 20 teens. It is hell or high water. Let me tell you why I think this movie is quite good. The aspects of it that I think are great coming up next. <laughs> Or high water you might see it in a dvd or blu-ray bin in walmart or store and find it cheaply but this is quite i think a good movie directed by david mckenzie written by taylor sheridan who went on to become a director and writer for other things and it stars a number of good actors chris pine and ben foster here they play brothers who are bank robbers the howard brothers toby and tanner and they're a team but they face off against sort of but not really a pair of police officers played by Jeff Bridges and Gil Birmingham were kind of an old Lone Ranger Tonto pair, a white sheriff with his sidekick as it were. And the movie plays on the old and classic Western tropes and has you know, a lot to say about those in this film. If you know Westerns, this movie will illuminate a lot for you and play off old standard ideas that you've seen and will rework them quite interestingly. I think one thing that makes this movie great is the acting. Chris Pine and Ben Foster are excellent as two brothers, and they're different brothers. One's more moral, moralistic. He doesn't want any harm to come to certain people. He wants to do things the smart way, where his brother's more of a hothead, played by a great turn here by Ben Foster, as a man who's been in jail, probably, I think, been in the Iraq War, and has a number of things that we learn very late in the movie about him. Turns out maybe the brothers have different motivations for robbing the banks, but we come to find out why they're robbing the banks, and it's not just to get money. Well, it is to get money, but there are reasons why they want to get money. And so maybe we end up sympathizing them with, with them a little bit in this movie. This is a classic bandit or sort of Bonnie and Clyde, a pair of people robbing other people or robbing banks. A classic American story, as it were, with the cops or the law chasing after them. In this case, the cops, the law, played by Jeff Bridges, and Gil Birmingham are quite good as well and they are old and I think that's very significant in this movie the young males the younger males in this movie not that they're that young but they're middle-aged are the bank robbers where these the old generation are the ones trying to stop them that is the thing you see in for example the Coen brothers no country for old men from eight years prior to this in fact this movie is in conversation with a number of modern movies the opening shot deliberately quotes The Dark Knight, a, a movie that begins with a high-stakes, exciting bank robbery of, with masked men going into a bank and trying to get its money. Well, this movie has that, only has a number of slip-ups, and the movie states that it's clearly very realistic as opposed to more sensationalistic superhero affair of The Dark Knight with its opening scene. The movie as well is quoting the Coen brothers, for example, using Jeff Bridges playing a marble-mouthed sheriff character, in True Grit, which he played uh, six years before this movie, he was the martial law and order character, but with an edge. And that was the Rooster Cogburn character here. He's doing a version of that. But I, actually, that's a trick, because I think he's a much smarter, wiser character in this particular film, although he sounds a lot like Rooster Cogburn. So you should see it play the Coen Brothers Fair, including No Country for Old Men showing up in this movie. I like the scenery and direction of this movie by David McKenzie. I like the writing a lot, so I followed Taylor Sheridan's career. I think he's got a good script here and very thoughtful script. This is a naturalistic movie in the tradition of literary naturalism, I think, because these men are motivated, the bank robbers at least, by their environment. Throughout the movie, we see shots of their area, the surroundings, the West Texas environment they're in. The idea that environment sort of creates these men or helps give them the impetus to do what they do comes up in this movie as they're in a world of decay. Rural America, here it's West Texas, is decaying. There's all kinds of debt, credit card debt. The towns are dying out. They're getting older. There's not a lot of economic activity. You see a lot of hints of things ending or coming to a hard end not just with the bank robbers and the threat of foreclosure on the ranch, but also in the sheriff character who's given mandatory retirement notice very early in the movie. And so he, his life is going to come to an end as a sheriff figure. He's teased about that throughout the movie, but it is looming, the end of all things, the end of you know American wealth and prosperity perhaps is here. The movie is also set in a place in time after the Iraq War, and there's definitely Iraq War things hinted at this is a subtle movie but i do think ben foster's character is was in the iraq war he knows how to shoot high-powered weapons that shows up later in the movie and frankly the armed people in texas who carry guns around are no match for him 
So he is interestingly self styles as a Comanche, as an old time Indian. Speaking of things that come to an end, the reign of natives, Native Americans or Indians in the land being taken over 150 years ago by the white settlers. That comes up throughout this entire movie. And then the character of Ben Foster self styles as a Comanche, as an Indian, as a quote, Lord of the Plains. And the idea that these white settler descendants are going to be pushed out of their land or being taken over by something else. What is this something else? Giant corporations and banks in particular. Maybe the big bad guy of this movie, after all, the banks. So in a way, it's like a classic 1930s movie uh, or 1940s movie. Think of It's a Wonderful Life where the banks are the bad guys. That could be the case in this movie, even though, interestingly enough, the banks are, are getting robbed by the two men in the movie. 150 years ago, all this was my ancestors' land. Everything you could see, everything you saw yesterday, till the grandparents of these folks took it. And now it's been taken from them. Except it ain't no army doing it. It's those sons of bitches right there. Now, I said the script is quite good. You would expect a movie like this to end in a showdown, as most or many Westerns do. But No Country for Old Men did not end in a showdown. Spoiler alert. So will this movie? I find this movie feels, the, the ending feels inevitable. You, you can sense 10 to 20 minutes in where it's going and how it must conclude. That question of inevitability, though, is interesting to me because it's tied into the question of decay. Rule decay, economic decay, cultural decay. Is that inevitable or not for this place in time, for rural America or West Texas? Interesting question, because you know, it, it, are humans in control of anything, or are we just subject to forces beyond our control? Actually, the movie is asking these questions in very subtle ways. And so I'm not sure if the movie is saying that the end of rural America or its economic prosperity is inevitable or not, but it, it's bringing up that idea. Now, the movie does not end, I think, in a traditional fashion. I think it's really more interesting. We're talking about the last five to 10 minutes here uh, than most Westerns I've ever seen. I really like the wordplay in this movie, the way the characters talk to each other. I think it's very, it, it's rewatchable and it makes it lively and interesting to, as a viewer to sort of pick apart and think about what these characters are saying, what they're meaning and sort of their motivation. I think most of these characters, particularly the three stars in the movie, maybe the top four characters, have a depth to them. And you don't see very many movies that have more than one character with depth. This one has, I think, two or three at least. So good job here, especially by Chris Pine. I think his acting range is quite good, probably better than most of the roles he's ever taken. This is one of his best movies, in my opinion. And Ben Foster, I think, really shines here. What do you think about Hell or High Water? Let us know in the comments. Anything said in this video, please let us know. Be kind. Thanks for subscribing. Have a great day.